Hello guys, a very good morning. So uh, we're going to continue with a brand new chapter where in this chapter we're going to learn about aromatic compounds. Okay, so uh, what are we going to learn in this chapter is we're going to learn nomenclature of aromatic compounds, uh, electrophilic aromatic substitution in benzene, taurine and other such chain reaction, um, effect of the substituent to the benzene ring, and synthesis of aromatic compound. So uh, based on the past year question analysis, um, Aromatic compound has received much attention lately, so uh, you should you might want to focus on how to synthesize these uh, chapters. Yeah, okay. So let's re uh, begin with the introductions. So in early history of organic chemistry, when we say is that uh, pleasantly aromatic smell smells com uh, compound were isolated from natural oils produced by plants and many found in process a unique high and saturated six carbon structure unit, also known as benzene ring. However, in nowadays organic chemistry, uh, aromatic compounds that contain a benzene ring are now part of much larger family, uh, classified as aromatic not because of their smell but also of their special electronic transitions. Okay, so uh, we're going to look into a very basic fundamental parts of organic chemistry for uh, aromatic compounds here. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at the nomenclature of the aromatic compounds. So as we discussed during the chapter 1, uh, benzene CCHC is a cycloalkane with a 3C double bond C in it. And if a substituent is substituting one of the hydrogen in the benzene, the name of the benzene will difference. Uh, will difference. So monosubstitute benzene's uh, derivative of benzene are named systematically uh, using benzene as the parent chain listing the substituent as a prefix. So uh, CCHC is the fundamentals uh, particles of the benzene. However, if you replace with one of the H with a CH3, so we are going to call this as a methyl benzene, or it is more known as toluene. So it has the formula of CCH5CH3, or more well known as C7H8. However, if you have a ethyl benzene uh, replace, if you have an ethyl substitution substituted in the benzene ring, so you have the formula CCH5CH2CH3, or more known as C8H10. If a chlorine were to substitute inside a benzene ring, so it will become um, chlorobenzene. So this is a chlorobenzene. And if you have a ketone, okay, COCH3 substituted in the benzene, we call it as a acid, uh, phenyl ethanol or simply acetophenones. So uh, it has a formula CCH5COCH3, or it can be further described as CHH8O. Carbonic compounds derived from the uh, arom uh, aromatic compounds can also known as a benzaldehyde, where aldehyde here acts as a functioning group. We have the formula C6H5CHO. Uh, you can also sometimes short form to become C7H6O. Benzoic acid with the formula C6H5COH, this is how it looks like. So it's generally uh, concluded as a formula C7H6O2. Okay. Now, phenol has the general formula of CCH5OH, where the OH here acts as a substituent. So in here, you have C6H6O. If you have phenylalanine, uh, phenylamine, also, also known as aniline, it is NH2 as the functioning group. And if you have uh, phenylethene, which is also well known as styrene, so it has the formula CCH5CH double bond CH2, or if you short form the formula, it becomes c 8 h 8 Benzene sulfonic acid is a benzene ring with OSOH2, also known as CCH5SO3H. And this is another example of anisole where it is a type of uh, ether. So these are a few fundamental ways of how we name uh, monosubstituted benzene. So now, uh, if there are disubstituted benzene, things will be slightly a little bit different. So if there are two substituent presence in the benzene ring, there may be three positional, possible positional isomers that take place. Take chloromethyl benzene as examples of chlorotoluene. So uh, when the moment that we call it as a toluene, that means this carbon will become carbon number one. So you have the position of one, two, one, three, and also one, four. So this can be called as two chlorotoluene, three chlorotoluene, and four chlorotoluene. Now for 2-chlorotoluene, there is also another alternative naming in an uh, aromatic compound. We call it as an auto position, so we call it as auto chlorotoluene. Another alternative to name 3 chlorotoluene is called as a meta chlorotoluene, where position the meta stands for the position 1-3. An alternative naming of 4-chlorotoluene 
is also known as parachorotonin, where the position 1, 4 is for the prefix of the para. Okay? So for example, above, the position 1, 2, 1, 3, and 1, 4 can be uh, replaced by the term auto meta para. So a few more examples will be shown to you afterwards. For example, if you have a 1, 2 dimethyl benzene, it has another name called as auto xylene. 1, 3 dimethyl benzene is meta xylene. 1, 4 dimethyl benzene is known as para xylene. <laughs> there are also some other ways to name all these com compounds. Yeah? Okay, so now, uh, if you compare between OH and NO2, so OH in here, because it has a common name, it will act as a functioning group. So OH will automatically be carbon number one, while NO2 can be named as a substituent called as a nitro. So for this, we are going to call it as 2-nitrophenol, or simply auto-nitrophenol. In the following cases, you have NH2 and also COOH. However, NH2 has another common uh, has another substituent name. NH2 substituent name is called as amino. So, with this, COOH will become carbon number one. So, from the composition of the COOH, NH2 is a position number three. So, therefore, three amino benzoic acid or meta amino benzoic acid. Last but not least, we have uh, OH and also COOH. However, OH in here can act as a substituent. The substituent name of OH is called as a hydroxy. So with this, we name it as 4-hydroxybenzaldehyde, or simply para-hydroxybenzaldehyde. However, if there are more than two substituents, the following guidelines are applied. So the benzene ring is numbered as to, uh, so as to give the lowest possible number of the substituent, and B, when there are mo more than two substituents in are presence, substituents are different as they are listed in alphabetical order. So for example, in here if we have position 1, 2 and 3, so we are going to call it as 1, 2, 3, trichlorobenzene. So we cannot use automata para anymore because automata para is specifically for disubstituted benzene. For right example, we have 1, 2, 4, trichlorobenzene. So it is not 1, 3, 4 because 1, 2, 4 is smaller. Then we can also have 3, 5 dinitrobenzene, so it is number 1, number 2, number 3, number 4, and number 5. So that's why 3, 5 dinitrobenzene. And the moment that we call it as a benzene sulfonic acid, this is number 1, number 2, number 3, and number 4. So therefore, 2, 4 difluorobenzene sulfonic acid. Now, benzene here must, may not necessarily to become the main functioning group. When there is a substituent, is one together with a benzene ring give a new base name, the substituent is assumed with position 1 and the new parent chain is used. However, sometimes benzene group can also be named as a substituent. This substituent of the benzene group is called as a phenyl with the formula C6H5. So the phenyl group is often abbreviated as CCH5 or PH. Now we're going to study a few phenomena. When do we call it as a benzene? When do we call it as a phenyl? A hydrocarbon composed of one saturated chain and one benzene ring is usually named as a derivative of a larger structural unit. However, if the chain is unsaturated, the compound may be named as a derivative of that chain regardless of the ring size. For example, this is a benzene, while this is 4 carbon of butene. So since this one is C4, this one is C6, so we are going to prioritize the C6, therefore we call it as a butyl benzene. However, if you have a longer carbon in here, let's say in here we have C7 and benzene is just C6, so C7 will be the parent chain. So therefore, in this case, we are going to call it as 2-phenylheptane. However, in, it doesn't mean that when you have a greater number of carbon, definitely you will have the functioning group, while smaller number of carbon cannot be the main functioning group. Things are untrue when it comes to unsaturated C double bond C here. So if you look carefully, this is a boot 2 in. So boot 2 in, you have a phenyl attached to the second carbon. So therefore, 2 phenyl, 2 butene. So this is basically a few ways of how we name the normal culture of the benzene. Yeah? Okay, so finishing about the normal culture, we are going to have a look at the chemical properties of the benzene. So here I have for you uh, summarized tables for uh, 
seventy percent. This is actually not yet hundred percent. Seventy percent of the aromatic compounds reactions, where we are going to study a few type of the reactions in here. Okay, so in here you can see that uh, benzene can subsequently become a uh, benzene can subsequently become a cyclohexane if you use this hydrogenation under high temperature and high pressure. Then it can be hydrogenated accordingly. So the five most basic reactions that we're going to talk about here is sulfonation, nitration, acylation, alkylation, and also halogenations. So in here, as you can see, uh, when we react with halogens such as chlorine and bromine, we are going to use a catalyst of AlX3 of FeX3. So for, usually for chlorine, we use AlCl3. Usually for bromine, we use FeBr3. So to produce a halobenzene. For formation of the toluene, we are going to use a uh, uh, haloalkene, where we are in here we use a uh, chloromethane. So chloromethane catalyzed by AlCl3 under reflux will give a toluene. If you want to form an acetophenone, we are going to use an acyl chloride. So acyl chloride is catalyzed by AlCl3 under reflux, so you form an acetophenone. In nitration, you have to use concentrated nitric acid, react with concentrated sulfuric acid under uh, reflux to form a nitrobenzene. And in order to form a benzene sulfonic acid, you require a sulfur trioxide and also concentrated hydrochloric acid, a hydrochloric acid with reflux. Uh, the combination between uh, SO3 and H2SO4 is also known as a fuming gas. So here, as you can see, there are other more reactions that we're going to see one by one of how they are going to undergo. So this is just a pre-introduction towards the next reaction that we are going to see uh, after this. Okay, okay. So please, uh, be, uh, please wait patiently for other uh, reactions. Uh. so we're going to study mostly the five basic reactions which I just highlighted in here right now. Okay. So without hesitation, let's have a look at the summarized table of all the reactions in here. So uh, even though benzene are highly unsaturated, surprisingly it is that not as reactive as alkene. So a benzene treated with a brown uh, bromine under dark condition, so the bomb or manganate or with dilute acid, none of the expectation, expected reaction take place. Huh? So benzene does, however, add hydrogen in the presence of finely divided nickels only at high temperature and also high pressure. So benzene will only react with certain reagent using acid as a catalyst. The reaction take place is more uh, are mostly electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. So there are five general reactions that we discussed as a subtopic in here, namely halogenation, Fiedercraft alkylation, Fiedercraft acylation, nitration, and also sulfonation. So the table below summarizes the reactions for all the reactions that we are going to describe later. So this is it. So if you have halogenations for chlorine gas, you require AlCl3 or FeCl3 at the room temperature. For bromine gas, you are going to require FeBl3 heated. For Fiedercraft alkylation, you are going to use a haloalkane catalyzed by AlCl3 or FeCl3 at the room temperature. And for Fiedercraft acylations, you are going to use a acyl chloride. RCOCl catalyzed by AlCl3 or FeCl3 heated at around 90 degrees Celsius. For nitrogen or benzene, your reagent is going to be concentrated nitric acid catalyzed by concentrated sulfuric acid and reflux at 55 degrees Celsius. And finally, for sulfonations, we are going to use a sulfur trioxide catalyzed by concentrated sulfuric acid under the reflux of 55 degrees Celsius. So here are basic general equations for the reactions. So, uh, I'm going to stop my first video for right now. I'm going to continue with the second video later. So, see you.